Thanks, everyone. So I'm going to talk about combining augmented reality and real-time communications. Um, you know, I didn't believe the hype until I first used an augmented reality app. And uh, now I'd be the first to say that AR exists at this, in this intersection of mind-blowingly cool and exceedingly practical. You know, just think about it. You can get a feel for the size, shape, and motion of the new car you've been eyeing without ever making a trip to the dealership. You can try it out in a few colors. You can even drive it down your driveway. Um, AR can change the way you keep track of your friends at your next music festival. Uh, you can use AR uh, to throw a dance party in your living room uh, and step inside the music video and invite your kids. Um, these experiences are um, incredible because they combine the intelligence and flexibility of software with a real world immediacy uh, that is completely new to uh, interacting with, with our electronic devices. Uh, there's almost a tactical sense of uh, these AR objects being, being present in the real world. But all the experiences I just uh, showed you are single user experiences. They're all one person holding a mobile device, walking around, kind of having a, a, a solo, solo view. What if we could combine real-time communications and AR? You could imagine using augmented reality to get help with a home repair from a remote technician. They could actually walk you through the process of rewiring that broken socket by drawing on the display. You could, uh, you could get a, a remote general contractor to propose a remodel to your house and walk through it in the physical space where the remodel would take place. You could uh, uh, get instruction on how to use a medical device from a remote support person. These are, um, these, these are completely new kinds of experiences that we can create by combining real-time communications and AR. Um, and you know, I think this is an exciting space. So let's build something together. Let's, let's dive into it. And we're going to start where um, all great AR help. It seems like the hello world of AR, basically. We're going to build an app that helps you buy more furniture. Um, this is apparently what everyone wants to build with augmented reality, and we will too. We're going to make it multi-user. So our customers need help decorating their, their homes. Um, so our customer is going to pull out our app, and they're going to share their microphone and camera with a remote interior designer. Um, they're going to use the rear-facing camera on their phone, not like the front-facing camera you typically use in a video call app. They're going to walk the designer around their house. What should I do with this corner? The designer is then going to be able to tap on the display and place a virtual piece of furniture into the view. So we can see, we can try it on for size, see if we like the way this looks. So this is the app we're going to build. Now, before we dive in to the code, uh, I want to give you a high-level overview of some of the components of an augmented reality scene. So when you work with augmented reality, you really there are four uh, pieces that make up any AR scene. There's first of all the video you're capturing from the camera. There is second um, an understanding of the scene that is derived using computer vision. Um, frame by frame, we're detecting edges in the video we're capturing. We're tracking the motion of objects, and uh, we're basically detecting planes, surfaces where we can fix uh, fix objects. Um, we're using the motion uh, sensors in the device to, uh, to track the world around us and to actually locate our camera on the phone in that world. And finally, we are rendering some virtual objects using, um, using something like SceneKit in iOS or Unity. So um, we're going to build this app today in iOS, and let me introduce you to some of the building blocks in iOS ARKit. Um, we've got uh, three big ones. AR Session. This manages the device's camera, and motion processing capabilities. Second, we've got an AR frame. An AR frame is a snapshot of the real world at a given point in time. So it's the, the video image, but it also contains the position tracking information, all the information about where we think, what we think is in the scene right now. And finally, we have an AR anchor. An AR anchor is a physical point in our real world. It's, it's uh, recognized by the computer vision and the camera. An AR anchor, anchor represents a real world point. Now, we're going to use a fourth object here, which is an AR scene kit view, or AR scene view. Um, the language gets confusing here, so I'll try to be really clear. An AR scene kit view basically pulls these pieces together in a single high-level object. Um, it pulls together an AR session for camera capture, scene understanding, and world tracking. 
And then it gives us a scene kit world joined to that real world camera so that we can synchronize the two experiences. This is what gives us the experience of sticking virtual objects into physical reality. And of course, this is Cranky Geek, we're gonna use WebRTC. Um, we're gonna use it via Twilio's video SDKs, but the components are still the same. So we've got a uh, media capture engine in WebRTC, and we're gonna use that to share the augmented reality experience between the two users. We're going to uh, transport via RTP, of course, using WebRTC. And we're going to use the data channel as a way to stream the interaction from the remote designer back to the customer's phone. So let's put all these pieces together. I know I've been throwing a lot of concepts. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to our architecture diagram here. We're going to create an AR session using an AR scene view on the customer's phone. We're going to write a custom capturer that allows us to capture the augmented reality view from the customer's phone and share it with the remote designer. On the remote designer side, we're going to use WebRTC to display those frames. And then when the designer taps the display, we're gonna send back an event over the data channel. We're gonna use Twilio's data track API, which is an abstraction on top of the WebRTC data channel. We're gonna send the coordinates of that tap back to the customer and drop a scene kit object into the real world. Make sense so far? All right. All the code we're gonna walk through now is available on GitHub. Um, feel free to pull it down, but let's get into it. So first, we're going to create an AR session on the customer's phone. That's here, creating the AR session. We're going to set the frames per second. This will come back in a second. We're going to set the FPS of that uh, AR scene kit view to 30. You'll see where that we use this in just a moment. And then we're going to create, I know the terminology is confusing here, we're going to create a scene kit, <laughs> a scene, and put it into our AR scene kit view uh, uh, so that we can render 3D objects. So this is that higher level building block I talked about. Okay, here comes the most important part. Now, how are we gonna share, how are we gonna capture this AR experience and send it to the other user? So we're going to using, uh, we're gonna create a video track, but we're going to, by default, when you use Twilio's video SDKs, uh, the, when you create a video track, we would normally capture from the camera. But we can override that behavior and capture and write a custom capture, and that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna write a custom capture, and we're gonna share it into the Twilio video room. You can see that here we're, uh, we're adding this to our what are called connect options and sharing this video track. Now when we capture frames, we wanna make sure we get both the camera image and the 3D objects. So we actually wanna capture the combination of these two things. If we just work with the AR frame, we'll just get the video image. We won't get the AR objects. So we need to actually run a snapshot on the AR scene kit view. This is not the most efficient way to do this. We, we can talk about optimizations later, find us after this. But, um, but this, is, this is a good way to get, uh, get something up and running quickly. This is a little bit inefficient though. So now let's implement our custom capture. Here's the most important part. Uh, when you implement a custom capture in our video SDKs, we are going to call a start capture method in your code. Uh, and then you need, to implement, you need to tell us when your capture is ready to run. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to link uh, a method which will capture frames to the refresh rate of the display. Okay, so our scene kit is refreshing at 30 frames per second. Every time the scene, kit, every time the, the scene refreshes, we're going to call this method display link did fire that you see up here. And then after we do all that stuff, we're going to tell the video SDK is that, hey, our, we're ready to, capture, ready to capture frames. Let's look at that display link did fire method. So every time we call this, you can see what we're doing here is we're taking a snapshot of the scene, we're converting it to a pixel buffer, and then we're creating a video frame from that pixel buffer, and we're giving it a timestamp, that's really important, and sending it into WebRTC. So this is now, we've, we've captured uh, a combined view of the scene, and we're sending it via WebRTC over to the remote participant. That's it for sending the, the combined uh, AR view from the customer over to the designer. Now on the designer side, we need to receive that track. So on the designer side, we're gonna first set up a data track. Remember, I mentioned a moment ago that we're gonna use this data track API to send touch events back to the customer. So we're gonna set up a data track. We're gonna uh, also write a method to handle uh, the subscription to the remote user's video and render that to the screen. 
And then we're going to write a handler for the tap events. This is pretty straightforward. So we're going to wire up to the, uh, the tap event this handle tap method. And this is probably what you'd expect. When handle tap is called, we're going to get the location of the, of the tap. We're going to encode it as a simple message and send it back to the, the customer's device. OK, last thing we need to do. We need to drop some furniture into the view here. So we're going to get that tap event back from the designer. We're going, now, now we're going to perform what's called a hit test. If you're building an AR app, this is really important. If I, uh, a hit test, you, you can imagine, if, I, if I'm holding my phone and I've activated the camera on the back of my phone, a hit test says, draw a ray from my phone out into the real world and tell me if you find any object. And, and if that object is a plane that I can fix something to, I'll get back a hit test result. You can tweak the different kinds of results you get back using these types. Check the AR kit documentation for more. But we're going to perform a hit test here, and we're going to ba get back an array of hit test results. Now, they're ordered in terms of proximity to the camera. The nearest, nearest object is closest. So we're going to grab the first hit test result. We're going to grab, our, uh, grab some object. Um, in this case, maybe it's the, the chair. And we're going to add it to our scene kit scene. And there we go. Now we can, now we can see our chair. But um, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's see a demo. So uh, Jen, hey. Meet Jen, everyone. <laughs> so Jen, Jen, um, Jen, I need some help. I, I, I'd like to help you decorate this space. Perfect. Uh, I think there's uh, some furniture in here. Yeah, I think it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of bland, honestly. Google, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know what's going on. But, um, so I'm going to fire up our app here. And I'm going to connect as the designer. Great, I'm and, connected as the customer. Great. So um, what we're seeing here is Jen's camera. Jen, show us around. Yeah, so I think we need to, um, you know, I think let's, let's start by, by sprucing it up a little bit. Can you, um, why don't you turn on, um, uh, why don't you see if we can recognize any planes here? Sure. So we're going to use a feature of AR Kit that allows us to detect hit points, detect feature points. This is a great feature for debugging. But you can see plane detection happening here in real time. Now, um, let's see. I really think uh, this place could do with some flowers, so let's go ahead and uh, drop a vase into the view right here. Um, oh, great. All right. Uh, now, let's, what else can we add here? Uh, I think we need some more seating right here down this aisle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, right here? Looks great. OK. There's a chair. Have a seat. <laughs> uh, awesome. Anything else? OK. You guys get the idea. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Jen. Everyone give Jen a hand. So um, that's it. That's a quick overview of how you can build uh, a, a real-time AR app. Share it with your friends. Um, get the code on GitHub. You know, I can't emphasize enough how excited I am about the combination of augmented reality and real-time communications. Check it out. I can't wait to see what you build. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>